Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, we'll skip that until John John Van Kemp sorry breakfast. And uh, I think Rick Mark MIA. Does anybody know where Rick is? Well, he's still in the <laughs> Do we have any birthdays this week or today? Because Rick is supposed to be here to report out on our birthday. Huh? This week, next week, anniversaries. Okay. Have anniversary Sunday. You do? How many years? Uh, Twenty-three. Congratulations. Thank you. Was that your anniversary trip to Italy? We didn't think you were coming back. We have uh, 29 uh, Rotarians today. We have, we're very fortunate to have a visiting Rotarian. He flew in from the airport, Bill Howland. <laughs> he um, just had a curiosity. Did anybody go to the Future Fund last week? Yeah, one of them. Uh, all right. So as you can see, I'm repping the Barnabas Network. Uh, it's one of our key service projects, and the executive director, Derek Sides, uh, not only presented, took third place, took home an $8,000 check. And so I'm going to each of the local loanees to introduce him and the work that they do. Uh, and he found out that he's already scheduled to be a speaker for you, and you are going to absolutely uh, love it. Um, anybody gambling tonight? Yep. At our fundraiser? Okay. Okay, there's a couple of hands. You got, yep, three. I have a lot of fun. Sorry, I'm going to miss it. I've got a, a young man graduating from college tomorrow. Awesome. Uh, so I got to hit the road. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Bill. Bill also makes barbecue sauce. <laughs> I know him as a sauce man. <laughs> and we're very fortunate to have today as guest son Horton and his son, Caleb Horton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is uh, Bobby here or Buster? Buster's not here today. What about some happy dollars? Happy dollars. Good enough demand. You mentioned the future fund. Uh, this week we had a great uh, annual meeting of the community foundation. For the first time was outside in uh, beautiful Laval Park. It was a perfect day, and it reminded me. Of the great fortune we are to have something that's worthy of the community foundation and work with us, and uh, a lot of the synergy and all the, uh, the service component of that as well. Um, but you mentioned the future fund. One of the things that got me involved with the community foundation was I was an original charter member when it was formed with Walker uh, Sanders came to town in the late 90s, uh, just over 20 years ago. It's still going strong. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Oh, uh, the first one is I'm happy I found a woman that's gold enough to stay married to me for 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is being back to see you guys after this in a couple of meetings. Italy is beautiful, it's incredible. You know, there's 2,000 year old castles everywhere, and great food and great wine, but I am still happy to be back here with you guys. So, happy Looking to the point this morning, Rosa flies home this weekend from her former abroad in Italy. So I just ask for a prayer for her. For those of you that do so, it's for a safe return. Thank you. All right. Uh, so I was here last night, actually, I graduated from the uh, Leadership Greensboro 2022 class. So wow. Wow. Hey, is that a fundraising dollar? Check it. 
nuggets brought themselves to the meeting. I didn't have to go pick them up. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I ordered some to go just to have them bring over that video. <laughs> this one's these two are for Steve Scott. Uh, one for Steve Scott. Congratulations on a fantastic fundraiser. Everybody I know that went to the fantastic pop party. And this is the one from Chris Jackson back in one piece on the square of the He's married now, too. <laughs> Brian, hey. Well, this dollar was going to be saved up to Chip uh, for the board. Thank you so much. But uh, in a quick pivot, I got a text yesterday as I'm knee deep cooking chicken in the thick of things, and my wife put a selfie while she was selling the bar. And I was like, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> hey. Chris Jackson could use some coaching for you to learn how to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, holding all this money, I'm reminded of the story which you may have heard about Grant Happy when he had the New Year's resolution a few years ago to come get in shape. And he came downtown to the Y where I go every day. And he looked up at the trainer and he was lifting weights. And he noticed some pretty young girls in there. And that's his trainer. She just one of these machines that I use to impress these pretty young girls. The trainer said, You need to use the ATM in the Y. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to uh, acknowledge Steve and all the team that helped Steve. If you'll stand up, let's just give them all a big round of applause. It was a fabulous party. House pressure's on Mark. <laughs> uh, a couple of announcements. Monday at the Sunset Club meeting at Cafe Pasta at 5.30, we will be having a new member orientation. So that meeting will be a new member orientation. If you're a new member and would like to go to that, even if you're in the breakfast group, you can come Monday at 5.30. Otherwise, we'll do another one at some point that's suitable for everybody. Um, and then Matthew, you want to talk about next Saturday? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, next Saturday, uh, amongst all the other things that were on the family calendar that I found out about this morning, we're going to Camp Care Free to replace a bunch of boards and dock. And it's not just a little project, it's a fairly substantial project. Uh, they're going to have all the material, basically, hammer, crowbar, and drills to go. Uh, they're going to supply everything else. If someone has a generator that's easily you know, movable, that's a fantastic time for the field. But Saturday uh, at 8 30, I think I said, uh, Kick Care Free. I'll send out an email and that's all I have to say about it. Awesome. Thank you. Changing of the guard. How many of you have RSVP to Danielle? Great. Great. June 16th. Tom can't wait. Uh, he's, he's resting up. Uh, anybody else have any announcements? Okay, well, we have a special, um, it's always a special day when we can induct a new member. And our newest member, Rick Dutch, is going to be inducted this morning. And your, we'll call you, you up and your sponsor. You only need 20 minutes for speaking. <laughs> It is always a special time to induct a new member into this wonderful club that was founded 31 years ago this month. And at this time, I would ask our past president, Dr. Guy Rabondo, as a sponsoring member, to uh, say a few words about our members. So, so Rick's one of my oldest friends. Known when I first moved to Greensboro, but oldest friend from Greensboro. When I first met, moved to Greensboro, and he's a great guy. He's got a huge heart, honest, caring, Perfect, perfect member for our club. So 
I know some other people in here know him. They know he'll be a perfect fit. So, welcome to the club. I hear his office reached out to Dale for an influence. So, I'm just asking for this. Thank you all. It's a pleasure to be here. I look forward to meeting all of you and working with all of you. Thank you so much. Looking forward to a great time. Well, as Rick, it is our pleasure at this time to welcome you as the latest member of Yates City Rotary. And on behalf of the Board of Directors and our members, we sincerely do welcome you here. Our welcome is not only in anticipation of the good fellowship we'll share with you here on Thursday mornings and during social outings and service projects. We welcome you also for your strong arm and sturdy back, which will help us carry out many service projects, which in a small yet significant way make our community, our country, and our world a better place to live. Now, for all here, Rotarian and non-Rotarian alike, let's be reminded of these important facts. First of all, Rotary is not a political organization, but all Rotarians are vitally concerned with everything pertaining to good citizenship and the election of good men and women to public office. Second, Rotary is not a charitable organization, yet its activities exemplify the charity and the sacrifices that one should expect from people who believe that they, we, have a responsibility to help others. And third, Rotary is not a religious organization, but it is built on these eternal principles that have served as the moral compass for people throughout the ages, including and as well as the foundation of our great country. Well, I've told you three things that Rotary is not. What is Rotary? Rotary is Rick, an organization of business and professional people pledging to upholding the highest professional standards. Rotarians believe that worldwide fellowship and international peace can be achieved when business people unite under the common banner of service. So at this time, I would request everyone in attendance here to please stand as we offer the following challenge. Rick. Have been chosen for membership of the Rotary Club of Gate City. Your sponsor and fellow members believe you to be a leader in your special line of work and that you embody the qualities of head and heart that fit you to interpret and impart the message of Rotary. <clears throat> Similarly, you will now be the representative of your vocation to this club and at the same time, you now become an ambassador of Rotary. We rely on you to carry these principles and ideals of service to those with whom we work. Additionally, we expect you to help inspire us, as I'm sure you will, your fellow members, to become better Rotarians. So, uh, Mr. Secretary, if we have the incidents of membership, uh, I will now ask Steve Scott and your chartering uh, sponsoring member, Dr. Ravondo, to apply them. Uh, with the rotary pin, the badge, and the four way test, wear it well. And at this time, we all welcome our newest member and allow us to send it right here. Welcome. Chris comes up and she's our speaker. This week, when our board met Tuesday, we've been um, having Zoom for a year, I don't know, two years now. We're not, we're stopping Zooming these meetings because for, I think the last month, no one's been on there. So if you are, you feel passionate about us continuing this, we are taking volunteers to help set it up in the minutes because it does take a lot of effort to set it up. So thank you for um, being patient with us as we figured all this out over the last two years. Okay, Chris. <laughs> We're privileged to have Son Horton and his son Caleb join us today to talk a little bit about Trail Life, which is a scouting organization that my my oldest and middle son and I participate in um, at uh, First Christian Church in Kernersville. Um, Son's responsible for starting the program, which started back in uh, 2017, 18 years. 
with about nine kits. I think we have 70 kits this year. So the programs balloon. We've got a bunch of involved dads. I think you said something in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 dads leading the program. Um, <coughs> Life's a recipient of one of our past president's grants this year. We gave them a thousand dollars to help purchase a trailer to store some gear in so that as we tow it off to camps and do different things, we've got it kind of in a central location at the church as opposed to in son's basement where it currently lives. Um, so um, anyway, um, I'm not going to steal all your thunder, but, but just to talk a little bit about what Trail Life is, it's, it's a Christian scouting organization, outdoor adventure, character, leadership development, with, with the goal of really working with kind of young boys and young men to build godly fathers, good citizens, just all around teach boys to become men, um, which, which I think many of us could agree there's, there's a dearth of just organizations that build strong men. Um, in our community. So it's our privilege to have Son speak today. Uh, thank you for your time and tell us a little bit about your life. Good morning. Uh, I want to extend my appreciation. Uh, this means a lot to me. I'm actually a past president myself of the El Camino Real Rotary Club in Oceanside, California. That was about 13 years ago. Uh, my son was born about that time. Uh, I took on a new job. I was working, for, uh, lived in San Marcos, had to travel an hour to work, an hour to the meeting. Then back, it was a, a lunch meeting, you know, uh, on Friday. So I had to travel back an hour back to work, and then back an hour to the home. So a lot of things considered. Rotary became second place to family, but I love the organization. I love the programs and, and the community service and the importance of what you, businesses do for the community, that this organization takes action. Not a lot of talk, there's some talk, but there's action that you guys take. And that's what's inspired me to do a lot of things in my life. Now, to give a little background on myself, I believe that with all the challenges that God gave me, it has prepared me for this moment. Never thought I would lead a, an organization like the scouting program. I myself was born in Vietnam back in 1971, skate when I was three and a half. So I, uh, my family's been through a lot. You know, my father spent 20 years in military service. Uh, we, he took on a grandmother, uh, a wife, and three kids that weren't his own. And he became father to me. That's how I had the last name of Horton. And we moved around quite a bit. You know, I didn't have any stability in location, but I had stability in a father, in a home. And uh, something that, that inspired me through my years is looking at everything that's going on. You know, um, I was the only Asian kid in my junior high in Louisiana in the 80s. You know, there's, there's a lot of challenges that back in the day is still today. You know, this, nothing's really new underneath the sun. But what's important is how we treat each other and how we prepare ourselves for all the challenges in life. And that's what brought me to trail life. Actually, my wife brought me to trail life, right? I was working from home, doing my thing, trying to get figured out what a father was gonna be with uh, new children. And I thought I was up to my eyeballs with activities. And then my wife said, you need something to connect yourself to your son. You know, you need to do something more than just what you do around the house and what you do for your, your uh, company. So she said, there's a meeting in Clemens and you need to show up. It's like, okay, yes ma'am. Took an order, drove on, right? I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anything about the program. She just told me to show up, right? So I showed up and then I got involved. Then I got suckered in, I mean, voluntold to, uh, to teach a, a few meetings. Right, and then I want we wanted this program to start at our church. Trail Life started back in 2013 as a direct result of the direction of Boy Scouts. Uh, where they were going, a lot of people didn't agree with, and that's fine. You know, that's why we live in this country. You have choice, you have freedom. Right? In order to understand freedom, you have to experience freedom, and that's what I. Um, and the choices that freedom provides. 
And I think some of those choices are being taken away from our youth. You know, before, when I was a kid, I was told to get out of the house because I was driving my mom crazy. And I went to the woods and I didn't come back until night, you know? If we leave our kids out in the street or they walk from neighbor house to neighbor house, the cops are being called. You know, pre range kids, they're in danger. You know, what's that about, right? So the, um, so we talked about uh, starting a troop with our church. And our church says, you know, we're tapped out. You know, there's, uh, we need a lot of uh, people to support this and we just don't have the support. But if you would like to take the step and, and start the truth, then you're more than welcome to. It was like, whoa, 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 just the idea guy. Yeah, just the idea guy. Yeah. So um, then the scouting program <laughs> opened up the doors to, to more questionable things. And another gentleman stepped up and said, you know what, I'd like to start a troop at the church. And then our pastor said, I got a guy named Son who's on fire. And, and you need to talk to him. It turned out that I was the only one that was experienced. Uh, we started the troop with just myself and one other gentleman. And about 12 kids showed up the first night, then about six the next. So we started small. Uh, we started unsure of what was going on. The only support that we received was uh, about $1,000 monetary support from the church was excellent. But we didn't know what to do with it. You know, the program was in its infancy. The, the classes, how to structure the meetings, how to get people involved, what support we're going to get, the software systems, the tracking, everything was just new. Matter of fact, I met with uh, Mark, the president and CEO of Trail Life. There was only four of us at the table uh, during a regional meeting. And we talked about, are you surviving? Are you thriving? Are you suffering? I felt I was suffering because I didn't know anything. But the key point in all of this is just like what you guys are doing. You got to show up. Nothing happens unless you show up. So I just kept showing up. I kept trusting God, kept um, making sure that you know, the importance of community, building the bonds, that's what this program to me is about. It's a ministry. It's not just about the boys. The boys are very important because that's our future. But also, there's a lot of dads, a lot of moms out there that don't have the support, that's never been fishing before, never been hunting, or not hunting, but shooting, uh, camping. There's a lot of life experiences that have been lost along the way. So we're, we're trying to incorporate things that you can't experience in school, uh, where you know it's okay to handle a knife. You know, when I was in junior high, you know, there was gun racks in the back of pickup trucks. You know, now if you, if you buy a piece of toast into a shape of a gun in school, you're suspended. You know, so, um, so again, in order to understand freedom, you have to experience freedom. That's what we do in this place. When we go camping, they just go wild. And not like, you know, burlap sacks and you know spears and whatnot, but they just enjoy themselves. Matter of fact, what drew one of the families to our program is there was a mom, she had about five to 15 kids. They moved really fast, you couldn't really count them all, right? But she came in with the boys and they just ran around the room screaming, yelling, and having a good time. And she was trying to calm them down. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. And I, I told her, it's okay. This is what boys do. This is what this program's about. Let them burn off the energy before we started meeting. And she was like, really? Can we do that here? I was like, absolutely. And then she was hooked from there on. Right? So our troop started off, like I said, I was doing everything. All the supplies came from my house. Um, all the support was from my family. There's some from the church. And then it grew from there. The two other gentlemen stepped up in the second year. The third year, we had about five that were actively participating. And we started with about the six to nine. Then the second year, we grew to 20. The third year, we grew to about 35, 40. Now we're up to 70. And, and this was not advertised. We talked about, at the very beginning, how do we get the word out on the trail? How do we get interest in this group? We're at a point now, we don't even talk about it. You know? It's a good problem to have. 
you know, when just from grassroots movement, just from word of mouth, that everyone's coming to our troop. It, we talked about closing the troop because are we going too big? You know, is, is the quality of our troop being impacted by the, the quantity of our troop? And again, I put a plea out to a request to the parents. Tell them exactly what's going on. If you like the program, if you're interested in the program, I need you involved. Resoundingly, we went from five individuals to about 25. So our troop size, we have about 22, 25 kids that are in the kindergarten, first grade. We have about 16 to 18 that's in the uh, second grade, third grade. There's another 15 that are in the uh, fourth and fifth grade. And really important is that we have about 14 that are in the junior high program that are going to the, the high school program. So this program is from kindergarten to 12th grade. Okay. So and we're retaining people. Um, and I think it's because I've been given the opportunity to do more than just teach the kids. We have a, a great gentleman, John Sink, that is my right-hand man who took over the, uh, the, the youth program. He told me last year, son, what, I don't want you burned out. You know, what's important to you? What's going to make you thrive? And I told him, frankly, I want the parents to be involved. I want this program not just for the boys. I want the parents to come to me and, and learn something, to experience something. So it's more of a, a family event than just never drop and go. All the parents are involved. I want the parents to stay. And so he allowed me to do that by taking over some of my administrative roles. So I can come to meetings like this, um, invite uh, special speakers to our group, plan bigger trips, uh, bigger meetings, um, bigger events. Some of the things you're seeing right there, there's the, there's the lashing. That's the older voice program right there. So uh, they're learning skills that they're not going to learn in school. You know, if you tie things together in school, you might get in trouble. We duct tape a kid to a bench once with the principal looking on, but you know, <laughs> that was fun, but it wasn't a life lesson, right? It was just you got to run faster, you know. So, uh, so our the future of our program are these boys, these older boys, you know, they're being put in leadership programs or leadership positions where they're leading the troop. And right now, they're being you know, it's a fall, walk, run program. For me, I, I spent seven years active duty in a special operations community at Fort Bragg. Learned a lot, you know, dealt with a lot of, I've been to a lot of strange places, met a lot of interesting people, didn't kill anyone. Um, but uh, what I've learned through the years is how to talk to people and how to train people. And that, that crawl, walk, run approach is very important. We're not going to set this program up for failure. We're not going to set our children up for failure. We're not going to set up the people that support us are for failure. You know, so these kids are, are learning the importance of relationships, the importance of responsibility. Our oath is on my honor, I'll do my best to serve God and my country, respect authority, to be a good steward of creation, and to treat others as I wish to be treated. Those are the core principles that I think about and everything filters through my mind when I talk to my children, when I talk to my troops, when I plan things, when they plan things, everything that, that happens has to meet that test, the same as your four-way test. There's been challenges along the way, uh, not with just growth, um, with uh, trying to maintain a low-cost program. We have a lot of different economic uh, levels in our group. So my, one of my goals is to keep the cost low. And with that, we do a lot of fundraising. The bonus is on us, not our church, bringing the funds. You know, so our, um, fortunately, this year, uh, we exceeded all of our fundraising goals. Even during COVID, you know, when most places shutting down, most people are spreading out. You know, our church stayed open. We, we tried the Zoom meeting, by the way, and with a bunch of kids, that was challenging. Super challenging. But one thing that we did, and it was a great idea that someone brought up, is um, for these lessons to have the kids record themselves and the fathers teaching the lessons. So when we did this, 
the kids were interested in watching their other friends, you know, doing the activities. And so they were really engaged in this whole program. So art, again, last year we doubled the size. Plus, the, um, we respected everyone's position when it came to what they felt safe doing. That's one of the hardest things for me to, to hear is for your safety. Like I said, I, I evacuated Vietnam when I, well, my family did when I was three and a half. I, uh, I went through the Cold War in Germany in the 80s. You know, I, I've seen a lot of things, I've done a lot of things, but one thing that helped me through it, all the crises is being prepared and having an understanding of where my foundation was. And not the fear of failure. We're all going to fail. We don't fail. We're not learning. We're not stretching ourselves. Right. So everything that I've learned in my life, I want to build a culture into the truth right? and in keeping with what the truth standards are. The program is set at a national level with guidelines, but our, it's a grassroots organization. So everything that, that we want to do, we can do. We're not dictated on um, you know, how we run our meetings per se, there's a standard on that, but the materials we, we have, they've already mapped it out, but we can go a little um, off script on it. We invited uh, guest speakers like this gentleman that, that um, forged his own knives. You know, um, if there's an interest, the kids are really interested in how to sharpen knives, how to make knives. You know, with little boys, that's where they're going for it. You know, they're, uh, Keep our meetings very simple in a sense that uh, we keep the block of instructions probably about maybe 10 minutes at that because their attention span is about five minutes. <laughs> First question I'm asked every meeting is uh, what are we going to do for fun? You know, so I focus on the fun. And one thing that uh, I've learned through the years is if you watch the kids play, then you get an understanding of what they know and how they're gonna act with each other. There's been several instances where we had fights, right? You know, uh, things that will really challenge you. There's a camping uh, trip that we had and the um, boys went to lure the flies and behind a uh, pile of sticks and they're building their own societies and structures and things like that. And one of the kids came out and said, you know, someone hit me. So I was like, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, and are you okay? And check them out. And it's like, well, uh, let's talk to your dad about it. And I was wiped out. I had four hours to sleep, had to pack, had to do all the things. I was exhausted. And then his dad came up to me in the middle of the group and said, do you know my son was jumped? I was like, I knew he got into a scuffle, but I didn't know, you know, to what extent. He said, yeah, three boys were on it. I was like, I'm sorry to hear that. Let's talk about it. It's like, no, I'm leaving. I thought my program was over. You know, I didn't know what to do. The father of the other son that was involved said, we're leaving too. So then I had two dads beat the feet at a camp. And I was like, what am I going to do? And so I just looked up and said, Lord, help me. That's all I said. All right. And then 15 minutes passed. I called up one of the dads said, hey, can we talk about this? Can we, you know, come to a resolution? He said, yes, I'm coming back. You know, I'm not going to let my son experience the things I've experienced with And I'm going to show him a different way. So I was like, wonderful. How do I get the other dad back? You know, he's already 30 minutes down the road. He's going to take another 30 minute turn. So I called him up and said, and I said, uh, all I said was hello. He said, son, I'm coming back. We forgot our net. Let's go. Thank you, Lord. You know, two dads come back in with their sons. I asked one of my friends, Jim, to come up with me to talk to him. And I, I just got on my knees and just looked the boys in the eyes and expressed to them the challenges I had in my life with bullying. You know, being the only kid in Louisiana, uh, not fitting in, you know, having to struggle to be accepted. And I told them from my heart how I loved them how they're good people and things that, that I wanted them to accomplish in lives. 
and how they need to be there together. And if they're going to fight, they're going to fight alongside, not against each other. And I looked up, everyone is in tears. Dads, myself, we prayed over the boys. The dads apologized to each other in front of their sons. And those sons ran off hand in hand and played all day long. Uh, that's what this program is about. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be things that make us uncomfortable. But if we have a, a Christ focus, a foundation, and we, we understand that foundation, then we're going to grow from it and experience greater things in life. So I don't know how much time I have left. Yeah, that's all. Then it's the next question. No, yeah, yeah. Well, I can go over some of the other um, things that we're doing here. Um, the early challenges, again, some of the things that were happening was um, moving from the, the scouting program, we were using their platform to our own platform. And so we're tracking advancements, we're tracking attendance, we're tracking um, you know, all the, the things that we need to do. And then we're told that we need to move off that platform because the scouts want to do their own things. We need to do our own things. Well, one of the, um, the programmers for the, the, um, that was going to build this platform for us had a stroke. He was in a coma. All the passwords was in his head, right? So you know, we got another bad moment. He recovered. And we were able to, to build that, that um, <coughs> program up. And the, um, it's helped us tremendously. Before, everything was on paper. You know, we're trying to track attendance, trying to track awards, trying to do everything we had to do. It was a nightmare. But now we have a, a calendar. We have um, everything's listed for our documents. Mm -hmm. um, every, we can send out RCPs. You know, that's not, I mean, thinking that's pretty rudimentary stuff. But I mean, when we didn't have it, now we have it, I'm like, hallelujah. You know, thank you, thank you. So uh, our program is strong. The, uh, it's based on, again, the leadership, the people involved. It's all chartered by the church. It's not chartered. You can't build a program on your own. It has to be chartered through the church. Again, that keeps us from some of the other ideas that might uh, be contrary to what we believe. The, uh, there's uh, programs that have not succeeded due to the fact of, of lack of involvement. There's, uh, in, even in, in Rotary, even in our churches, even in our schools, there's no way 10% of us that actually stand up and actually do something. I'm, I'm proud to say that in our program, we have more adults forming and in roles Ladies also, our board uh, chair of lady, uh, is, the chairperson is a lady. You know, we have, um, so we don't, it's not a, a boys club. It's not about just, you know, men. It's about community. It's about building, um, again, stronger families on this. The, um, I know there's a little hammering there. <laughs> We're over there. Sure yes, that's what's so, um, so our, the challenges that we're, we're faced now, again, is, is to maintain the, the quality of our program, to make sure that with the growth that we have, that we can maintain the, um, the strength of the program, plus supplies. Right? Thank you again for the, the grant. Uh, there's another program that is, unfortunately has gone away, but they have two trailers that need a little help and some supplies. So the, the grant that's being provided is going to help get the tires, fix whatever's necessary, and move the probably a thousand pounds a year out of my basement. So, and help us buy things. Uh, with the, the last camping trip that we went on, we went up to Danville. Um, uh, there's a huge tank museum up there, by the way. Uh, it's the largest in the world. If you haven't been, it's pretty awesome. Um, the, um, the owner's a little quirky, but when you own you know, a few hundred tanks, you know, you're a little quirky. So uh, the, we had 74 participants in this camp out, right? That's, that, actually, that's a problem because you know, the funding for it, it um, costs about two grand for the campground, for the food, for some supplies. So 
you know, that's that's part of it is the fundraising aspect and the size of the tree, feeding them, keeping them entertained, moving them. You know, we went to a fire station recently and we prepared all this. We uh, coordinated with whoever needed to be coordinated with. And I knocked on the door and the fire chief was like, um, are you here for the community room? I was like, well, we're here for a tour. I was like, really? Uh, didn't know about that. And he said, how many you got? I was like, I have a hundred. So, oh, okay. So, but they accommodated us. Right? We went to the fire state or the police station. They didn't know there was going to be about 80 of us. And then they told us, uh, you need to tone down. So that's where we're at right now. It's just making sure that we have to split up. We have to split up the, the younger boys. Uh, now there, there's um, 26 of them. If you ever dealt with five and six year olds, Two of them is a lot, right? <laughs> One of them might be a lot, but now we have uh, two patrols there, and every time you split a patrol, you have to have two registered adults. And that's another very important thing. In order to become a registered adult, you have to be background checked, plus you go through a child protective service training. It's an hour long. They talk about really uncomfortable things, you know, kind of made my screen crawl on this, on, on some of the things that are happening. But it was important for us to protect our youth. And when, whenever we split up the patrol, again, we have to have two registered adults, meaning the two dads are, and at the lower levels, uh, mom could be a part of patrol. At the higher levels, only dads can be uh, instructors, not moms. And, and there's also uh, always a, a two-person rule. So if the kid goes to the bathroom, if there's never going to be a child that's going to be alone with another adult unless it's with their parents. That's it. There's no exceptions. There's no, that's just what it is. Okay? So unfortunately, with the way that the world's going, we have to protect ourselves, we have to protect our children. So, um, I'll pause. Why don't you uh, take a couple of questions? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna ask you, I know it's a lot of guns. How old are they? Well, the, and the parents have an issue with that because you mentioned they have points. I slightly wonder about but I am out of the board. I have four brothers and we fought all the time. I have two great and two parents. Are these parents more comfortable with the lending up the keys? Yes. Yes, it was. So, um, so related to that, first you should write for us. Your life story and God helps you in your life is amazing. But can you cut? Do you do things like food kitchens and make meals on you know those kinds of things? How yep. about softer or something? Yeah, so um, when it comes to age appropriateness, right. you know, um, <clears throat> being around firearms most of my life, uh, safety, 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 you know, uh, with the younger boys, BB guns, you know, range safety, you know, right and left limits, knowing your target, knowing behind your target. No finger on the trigger until so all these things that you know are safe. We, we teach them at a young age. They don't get a touch an AR until unless their dad's next to them and they're old enough to do it. Right. So only the older boys. That's um, around 12, age uh, 11 and up that are able to use BB guns or not BB guns, but 22 or higher caliber. Right. So there's. Um, there's some shooting clubs out there that, that use uh, shotguns and things like that. So even with the, the knife training, the kindergartners and the first grade and second graders, they're using plastic knives and so You know, when you get to fourth and fifth grade, actual knife, actual stick, right? Now how you hand it off, how you hold it, how you, how you treat it. Um, when it comes to physical interaction, fighting, not okay. Wrestling, questionable, right? But boys need, men need sometimes to get hands on. You know, I've talked to a few NFL players that retired and then they talked to their buddy who, you know, just you know, took out someone, you know, got into the house and whatnot. It's like, how did that feel when you hit them? You know, men are like that. Men are built differently. But when it comes to, um, Interaction with each other. It's again, we can test our strength 
but we're not going to to a point where it's going to be a an altercation. This is more of a comment than a question. I just want to applaud you. You know, it's the world's free to do everything except basic human nature for men, right? So this this world needs men who will stand up and be aggressive to defend people who won't. And that's what our military and our police and our fire department are based on. So I want to applaud you for taking that stance and you know not taking the easy road of political. We'll know it's to be a lion until it takes time and you have to become a lion. Right. So, who is maybe this is for you and Chris? Who enjoys it more, the dads or the kids? <laughs> 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 that would be a specific example of probably more dads. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dads enjoy it. Yeah. No, uh, we're we're going out to the uh, Yorktown to uh, spend the night on the carriage. And this is our third trip. My youngest son, I have a, a, an eight year old, this will be his first trip. Here, and I tell some of my friends uh, there that don't have boards or are not in the program, and it's like, can we join? Just us? And just, you know, the same. But yes, it is one of those things. Absolutely. It's, it's meant to be that. You know, if we just ex you include the boys and exclude the, the family, then you'd have a detached relationship. Thank you for the question. Yes, sir. What would you say is the major differentiator between uh, trail life and uh, scouts in America? I think the, the biggest thing is scout shall be reference. We put that first. That is priority. Nothing is tested unless it filters through what would Jesus do. You know, we incorporate faith as in everything that we, we discuss. We don't shy away from it. We don't apologize for it. But we need that's being instilled in <clears throat> the boys in the program, and we focus on what their needs are, not everyone else's needs. Well, I don't know how many are in, in North Carolina, but it's all within all 50 states. There's over 600 troops and over 39,000 members as a state. So this program is exploding. Um, again, uh, where others are shrinking.